Recently, I posted a video about how to install Debian Bullseye with ButterFS subvolumes. This process is pretty simple to get Debian installed with a custom ButterFS subvolume layout. But now I'm faced with the task of taking snapshots of the system since time shift won't work unless it has an Ubuntu layout, aka the root subvolume being it at and the home subvolume being it at home. So that's exactly what today's video is about. I want to go over these simple little bash scripts that I wrote to overcome this problem that I created. So starting off, I knew how to manually take a snapshot. So that would be sudo btrfs subvolume snapshot at rootfs at snapshot slash whatever. But there was some really specific things in there and I kind of wanted to make them a little more portable and more generalized and just better for a script. So what I needed to figure out first was how to pass a name that can vary from machine to machine into this command. So I started playing around with grip and sed and awk and I finally got it working and working pretty well. Then not being satisfied with just a snapshotting script, I added a feature that will delete the oldest snapshot once it reaches some arbitrary number. I set mine to five for the video, but in practice, I'm probably going to leave it at more like 10, possibly 20 for each. Then, not being satisfied still, I added colored output so it would be easier to see it at a glance. Now, I feel like it's kind of okay to show off to you guys, so let's take a look at it. The snap root script that I wrote and the snap home script here are essentially the same thing except one is for snapshotting the root subvolume and the other is for snapshotting the home subvolume. Int snap root and snap home. Now I have another one here called snap list and another that I've been kind of playing with called snap restore. I'm not going to show off snap restore today because I'm still kind of playing with it and it's not ready. But snap list is still pretty cool too. So since snap root and snap home are essentially the same except for you know, the subvolumes that they snapshot. I'm just going to take you through one and just know that it will apply to both. Vim snap root. The script starts off by setting an allowed number of snapshots, which I assign to the value of SN. And in this case, SN equals five, just for the sake of the video. Then I declared my colors, and I liked red and yellow for this, but that's easily changed. If you didn't like red and yellow, you can make it whatever color you want. Next, I decided to get the device name. So root subvolume device, so RSVDV. I know, I just used all weird letters that, forgive me. So RSVDV, root subvolume device. That is set to the output of a df-th command. Let's run df-th and pipe that through grip btrfs and let's grip again for a slash at the end of the line. Pipe that through cut dash d and give it a space for the delimiter dash f one. That's going to give me slash dev slash vda3. Now, since this is a virtual machine, of course it's going to be slash dev slash VDA because it's vert manager and that's what they do. Whereas if this were on actual hardware, it would be slash dev slash SDA3 or slash dev slash NVMe ON1, blah, yada, yada, yada. But in this case, it's VDA3. And I didn't want to have a hard and fast set name for the root subvolume device, so I have it be the output of a command. Next, I wanted to have a date attached to the end of my snapshot name. So I have the current date, so cdt equals the, the date command. But if I just run the date command, you see I have a lot of spaces in here, and I don't like spaces in my uh, file names. So hence the sed command. So if I run date and then pipe it through sed 
and then substitute all spaces for dashes globally. That's much better. Next, I wanted to get the name of the root subvolume. So the best way that I have found to get that name was to run this command. Because just the output of sudo btrfs subvolume list from root. <laughs> you see, I have 256, 13542, top level 5, path at root fs. And you see everything just kind of goes up in number the farther you go down the list. So I knew that my root subvolume was going to be my very first one. So if I clear this screen and then run that command, sudo btrfs subvolume list from root by through grip level 5 pipe through head dash n1. Now that's going to give me the line that all that's on, but I want just the name of the root subvolume. Let's pipe that through awk. And then let's print the very last word. So print dollar nf. We get at root fs. And this command works whether it's named at, at root fs, at root subvolume, whatever. And what that's going to do is find the, the very first subvolume that's in that list, which is generally your root, and that's going to be your output. Next, I wanted to find the name of the snapshot subvolume. So I ran essentially the same command again, except I gripped for snapshot after I gripped for level 5. So if I pull up the same command and I take out head in 1 and I grip for snapshot, <laughs> you get at snapshots. Then I wanted to find my number of root snapshots that I had. So RSL, root snapshot list. The best way I could find to do that was to run pretty much the same thing that I've been running, sudo butterfs subvolume list, and then pipe that through grip, and then grip for root, and then pipe that through wc-l. I'm gripping for root here because on down the list, I'm actually naming it root-date. I haven't quite got to that part yet. So rsl is going to equal this. So sudo btrfs subvolume list from root, pipe through grip, snapshots, pipe through grip, root, and then pipe through wc-l. You can see that gives me five. So I have five root snapshots at the moment. Next, I wanted to be able to find my oldest root snapshot. And if you noticed earlier that when I found my root subvolume, that was the very top of the list. So as the, you go down the list, the numbers get higher and higher, and the snapshots also get newer and newer. So to get my oldest root snapshot, I did essentially the same thing. I piped it through awk, and then print $nf you know, to get my last word, and pipe it through head dash n1. And that gives me at snapshot slash root, then the date that that was taken. Now next I have an if statement. The if statement is if the root subvolume device exists, then sudo mount the root subvolume device to slash mnt. And then print and then print out in yellow mounted the root subvolume device to slash mnt. Then change normal then change back to normal color. Then if it doesn't work, it's going to print out in red. No ButterFS drives found. Back to normal color and then exit out. And that's the end of that if statement. So if this does work, it's going to progress on and it's going to, we're going to CD into MNT. Now you must be in that directory to perform the task. Next, it's going to be if the root subvolume exists, print out in yellow, root subvolume found, 
and then print out the name of the root subvolume. If it doesn't work, print out in red, no root subvolume found, exiting. Then it's going to do the same thing for the snapshot subvolume. If it finds it, prints it in yellow, snapshot subvolume found, name of the subvolume. If it doesn't, prints it in red, no snapshot subvolume found, exiting. So now enough setup. It's meat and potatoes time. This is the part where it actually creates the snapshot. So it says sudo butterfs subvolume snapshot root subvolume to snapshot subvolume slash root dash cdt. So that's just going to take a snapshot of the root subvolume as it sits at the time and then make that snapshot in your snapshot subvolume and name it root dash date. Then next what I wanted to do was remove a snapshot if there are more than five. Because, well, there was five, that's just an arbitrary number that I came up with. So if my root subvolume list is greater than or equal to the SN variable that I set at the, at the top of the script, I print out in red, removing oldest snapshot, and then sudo butterfs subvolume delete dollar ORS, or my oldest root snapshot. If this subvolume list is less than five, it's going to print out in yellow too few snapshots, not deleting anything. Then that's the end of that if statement. It CDs back to my home directory and then sudo umounts slash mnt and then exits. So you just went all the way through my snap root script. Now just know that my snap home script is essentially the same thing except it's snapshotting the home subvolume. So if I wanted to run that script, let's clear this screen. And let's say I wanted to run snap root. It's going to ask for my password. And then mounted dev VDA3 to slash MNT. Root subvolume found at root FS. Snapshot subvolume found at snapshots. Then create a snapshot at root FS. In snapshot slash root dash date. Then it removed the oldest snapshot, which was taken on the 9th. Now, the same thing can also be done with my home sum volume. So if I clear this screen again and I run snap home, it also mounted dev VDA3 to slash MNT. It found the home sub volume at home. It found the snapshot sub volume at snapshots. Then created a snapshot of at home in at snapshot slash home dash date. Then it removes the oldest snapshot and it just deleted that subvolume that was created on the 8th. Now, I did write another script called snap list. So I use the same syntax as I did in the other two scripts to list out my root and home snapshots. So RSL equals sudo butterfs subvolume list, pipe through grep snapshots, and then pipe through grep again for root, and then pipe that through wc-l. Same thing for the home subvolumes. And then it prints out in red, list of root snapshots, then changes color to yellow, and then actually prints out the number. Then it runs sudo butterfs subvolume list, pipe through grip snapshots, pipe through grip again for root, and then, then pipes through awk, and prints out the first column, second column, and ninth column. Then skips a line, and then prints out in red, list of home snapshots, goes to yellow, and then gives you the number and then runs the same command for the home snapshots as before sudo butterfs subvolume list from root grip snapshots grip home then pipes through awk and then prints the first second and ninth column and that's the whole script so if i quit out of this and then run snap list it gives me list of root snapshots five so it gives me all of the IDs and the names for those snapshots. So if I wanted to boot into a different snapshot, all I would have to do is let's say I wanted to boot into the subvol ID 304. All I would have to do is sudo vim slash etsy fs tab. Then come down here. And then change my subvol equals at root fs to subvol id equals 304. And then save the file, right quit, then reboot. And I will be booted into that snapshot. 
So that's about all I've got for today. I just kind of wanted to take you through my thought process of how I came up with, you know, these little simple scripts to actually perform a really important task. And if you have any suggestions or improvements that you want to make to the script, that would be great. I, um, I welcome all feedback. It's a, it's a pretty cool little script, and I've been really happy with how it turned out. And now in the future, I may try to do a snap restore. I haven't quite decided what it, exactly how I'm going to implement it yet. And I would love to bring D-Menu into that. So like pull up all, all of my roots of volume snapshots in a D, in D menu, be able to select that and then have that get put into the FS tab and then reboot. That would be really cool. But I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to implement it yet because that sounds really convoluted and all that, but it sounds like fun though. But anyway, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. You are awesome. And I really look forward to hearing some feedback on this because I'm kind of excited about how this turned out. So with all that said, thank you for watching. Y'all have a nice day. Like, share, and subscribe.